Hey everybody, welcome back to the class. In this video, we're gonna cover an interesting problem. We wanna say for, for some given date, and in this case, we're working with uh, January 31st, 2021, what is the most common landing page? Meaning, how many sessions and how many users land on it? So, like anything else, we need to first start by saying, what event do we need? And I would argue that the session start event is a good event because if we have every row for a session start then it makes it pretty easy to count the number of sessions right and then from there if we have the pseudo user id floating around or the user pseudo id floating around we can we can do something with that right so I, i'm just taking this query that we had last time where we have an event timestamp, an event name user pseudo id session id we're just going to start from there and, and what do I need to change? Well, let's look at our data model. Here's a, a random row that I found for the event start. Uh, sorry, the event name called session start. And remember what I was saying, every event is kind of like a table. So imagine we just had a table of all session starts. What, what do we need to find? Well, within that we, we need, I think we need the page location. And that page location, uh, the key is page location. And, and where do we get the value? We get it from the event params value dot string value. So whereas previously we were going into the event params and getting the GA session ID, which had an integer value, we just want to go get the page location. So we can, we can start from that uh, little subquery. And, and this, this happens row by row by row. It's, it's not a correlated subquery. We're not doing any like join necessarily back to the outer, uh, the outer row or anything fancy like that. We're just gonna get the, uh, the page location and, and pluck it out and it's a string value. So let's just, you know, let's get rid of these columns. We don't really need them. And let's see what we have just to prove that this is useful, right? So, okay, good. We've got the user ID. We've got the, uh, that's not a session ID, right? That's a landing page. We'll call that a landing page. Always make sure to name your columns correctly. And this looks good, right? So what do we need to do now? Now, how, how would I get the number of sessions? Well, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do account star. Because if every row is a session start, I just need to count my rows. So that, that, that kind of differs from say, like if, if we were doing like page view, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that count operation because I'd be counting page views, right? But since we're, we're doing the event for session start, I, I can do this. Now, what's wrong here? Select list expression, references and ungrouped column. We, we both know that we're taking all the unique uh, combinations, well, ordered, com yeah, ordered combinations of user ID and landing page, and, and we're counting how many times they occur. That, that's what grouping and counting is. So we'll just have to group by uh, one and two, which refer to these two columns, and then we'll just check out what happens. All right, so what else do we need to do? Well, we, we don't need the user ID anymore. We, we just need to, to count them, right? So we could just say count distinct as unique users. And, and I'm gonna, you know, where, where am I gonna put this, right? So do I have any values that need to be grouped anymore? No. I do, well, yeah, I do. I have page location, right? You caught me tripping, okay? So I have page location, so I still need to group by page location. We, we just moved our user ID uh, from a dimension to an aggregation about the dimension by counting it. So let's do that. Great, so now we have each landing page, we have unique users, number of sessions. Now let's do a quick psychological check. Could I have 496 users driving 562 sessions? Yes. Could that be the other way around? No, because every unique user must create at least one session, if not more. So that's a relationship you would always expect to hold. And since we're only looking at a single day, 
I would further expect uh, the numbers to be pretty similar. Uh, how, how would we find the most popular landing page, right? Let's let's order by by um, unique users, which is the second column, and I'll say descending, and we'll look at the top ten landing pages by unique users. And what does it happen to be? Google Merchandise Store, Shop Google Merchandise Store. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, what I want you to try out is add a new field. I want you to say add uh, the source medium. So it would basically be like, you know, your logic here as source medium, and then modify this query. And I'll give you a hint. If, if you look at this table, so far we've been talking about like the date, timestamp, and then the event params. But if, if you look at the schema, let's see what else. Like where, where is the, the traffic data? Um, so, so we have a traffic source and we have a medium name and source. And even though this, this looks nested, maybe we don't have to unnest anything. Maybe we just have to do something with like the attribute. So I'll, I'll leave that as a hint. Try to do something with the traffic source and maybe figure out how to concatenate the source medium together. But I don't think you'll have to do anything fancy like this unnest query here. So try that out and I'm going to go ahead and solve it. So if you haven't solved it, just, uh, just pause the video and give it a shot. Remember, you can't learn if you can't write the code. If you can't write the code, you'll never be able to effectively use AI to write it for you. So there's a bit of a, a paradox here now with AI. It's only useful insofar as you know how to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, say traffic source and okay, these look like fields I could just add. Like, can I just add the source and group by uh, the first two columns now and maybe order by the third? And that, that will let me do it. Let's see what it looks like. Great. So now I have, I have my source, right? So this is, this is actually pretty good. So what, how do how would I get source medium? Well, I'm just going to concatenate the fields. I'm just going to say, uh, the double pipe is a concatenate operator. If you've never seen that and I'll, I'll do another one and, and I'll in here, I'll put like, uh, how do they do it in the interface? They put that funny slash, right? as a source medium and let, let's see what that looks like does that look like what we we typically see in the interface yeah there it is right the the source and the medium and well, you'll put a little space there just just for cosmetics so very cool so now we have the uh, the source medium the landing page the number of users and the number of sessions what else would we want to do here, right? What else would we want to do here? Uh, when we come back, we're going to try to say, well, how many transactions from sessions that started from that landing page and source medium? This is going to be a little harder. We're going to step into, you know, we're going to get out of the minor league and, and step into like, you know, the, what is that baseball league? It's not quite pro, but it's close. Maybe that is the minor league. I'm not a baseball person. So think about that. How would we go from this query to, to getting transactions? You have different events. What event do we need? How do we join it to our data? Start figuring it out. Give it a shot. Maybe use AI. See what you could figure out. Let me make sure the query is there and the instruction is there. We'll see you in the next video, and we're going to really start solving hard problems. Thank you.